سخنرانی خانم مریم رجوی مردم و مقاومت سازمان یافته عامل تعیین کننده در تحولات ایران می توان و باید ایران و منطقه و جهان را از شر آخوندهای اتمی خلاص کرد 26 اردی بهشت 1401 مناسبت خیزش های حق طلبانه مردم ایران علیه گرانی های کمر شکن گرمترین درود ها رو به قیام کنندگان و هموطنان به پاخاسه در شهرهای مختلف تقدیم می کنم موج اعتراض ها و خشم مردم ایران بهترین پاسخ به رژیم ولایت فقی و رئیسی جلاد 67 است بیش از یک هفته از قیام های خروشان مردم در شهرهای مختلف می گذارد و الان به حدود سی شهر رسیده است سلام به مردم و جوانان بیباک ایزه اندیمشک، ماه شهر درود خورم آباد و ایلام و درود بر جوانان قیام آفرین و شورشگر در جونقان، نیشابور، بهدشت، شاهین شهر، دسفول، یاسوج، ایران شهر، اردبیل و ماسور مردم قهرمان احواز، همدان، بروجرد، بروجن، اصفهان، تبریز، سوسنگرد، شهرک رضویه در تهران و شهر کرد که عزم مردم ایران برای سرنگونی رژیم را نشان می‌دهند. و سلام بر به جان آمدگانی که شعار مرگ بر خامنه ای و مرگ بر رئیسی می دهند و آزادی و حقوق پایمال شده و به قارت رفته خود را طلب می کنند آخوندها به گفته خودشان می خواهند با چند برابر کردن قیمت ها امسال ده ها میلیارد دلار درآمد کسب کنند آنها نام یک چپاول عظیم را جراحی اقتصاد کشور گذاشتند اما رژیمشان 
از این جراحی زنده بیرون نخواهد آمد خامنی و رئیس جلاد با چنگ انداختن بر نان مردم میخواهند قدرت خود را حفظ کنند در مقابل مردم و مقاومت و کانون های شورشی با قیام و شورش قدرت شوم آنها را در هم می شکنند مراکز سرکوب و دجالیت را در هم می کوبند و این و این تلیعه آزادی و پیروزی است عموم هموطنان را به همبستگی با شورشگرانی که برای نان و آزادی به پا خواسته اند فرا میخوانم درود بر آزادی درود بر شهیدان سلام بر قیام آفرینان Mr. Secretary, welcome to Ashraf Tree, the house of the Iranian People's Resistance. Those who have gathered here today continue the Iranian people's 120-year struggle for freedom. Uh, they include uh, 1,000 tortured political prisoners of the Shah's dictatorship and the imprisoned, and those imprisoned under the mullahs. Uh, in visiting the resistance museum, uh, you saw a small part of the Iranian people's enormous suffering, and on the other hand, their struggle for freedom despite the most brutal repression. The Iranian people and uh, the Mullah's regime uh, have been in a harsh confrontation for the past 43 years, and the fight will continue until a free democratic republic is established in Iran. For sometimes the mullahs tried to portray Iraq as the enemy. Another time they tried to show the U.S. as the enemy. But the people of Iran and the MEK say that our enemy is right here in Iran. The mullahs said the MEK were terrorists, a cult, and enemies of God. They claimed the MEK did not have any base of support in Iran. There are many such baseless allegations. There are two significant factors to the conflict in today's Iran. On the one hand, we see the regime at its weakest point. On the other, we see the people's maximum anger and discontent. The outcome of these factors has been the progress and uh, expansion of the organized resistance. The West ignored the Iranian people and their organized resistance as the decisive factor in any development in Iran for four decades. It does enable the mullahs to be on the verge of having a nuclear bomb. As you said last September, you are on the right side of this fight. Uh, you said, and I quote, Iran will never return to uh, rule by a dictatorial Shah or 
تاکراتیک رژیم The central fight is the one in the streets and in the mosques uh, and in the minds of the Iranian people. It is the divide um, between the people and the organized uh, opposition seeking freedom and democracy on one side and uh, the entirety of the regime on the other. I have been in this fight on the right side for over a decade now. of the bread has multiplied. Therefore, uh, the Iranian cities are rising uh, one after the other against the Mullah's regime. Yes, uh, by a glance at the objective conditions uh, and the successive eruption of uprisings in Iran, one can see that regime change is on the horizon today. The people of Iran have already decided for a final confrontation with the regime. In January 2019, you said, we must confront the Ayatollahs, not cuddle them. Appeasement or decisiveness? Siding with the ruling dictators or with the people? Uh, this has been the major challenge of Iran policy over the past four decades. The outcome of appeasement of religious fascism has been the five capital strategy, which you mentioned uh, three and a half years ago by referring to the situations in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and Yemen. We have always declared that appeasement and giving concessions will not contain the regime or change its behavior. Instead, it will provide it opportunity and encourage it to pursue its destructive policies. Four years ago, in these days, you correctly uh, defined the conditions for changing the regime's behavior in 12 articles. But the world saw that the mullahs did not accept even one of the 12 items. Even when a so-called moderate government was in office. The West has failed to take into consideration the factor of the Iranian people and resistance. Ignoring the people's factor is the missing part of the policy which caught the West by uh, surprise during the 1979 revolution, which toppled the Shah. Uh, the Shah uh, resorted to mass killings and curfews in the final months of his rule, but it proved to be counterproductive. Likewise, Khamenei appointed an executioner implicated in the massacre of political prisoners uh, as the regime's president to close ranks in the face of the uprisings and save his regime. After one year, uh, one can surely say that Khamenei's dream did not come true. The regime is in deadlock and has no future but an inevitable downfall. So uh, the regime finds its solution uh, in destroying the organized resistance and its only democratic alternative through suppression, terrorism, and the demonization campaign, thus uh, claiming that no alternative exists. The Mullah's criminal regime has included you among its 
targets of terrorism. In my view, this is a yardstick to assess the uh, validity and importance for your positions. Uh, it is a medal of honor uh, for any personality to become a target of the religious fascism. the mullahs will take their dreams in their graves. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, a few days ago, the Court of Appeals in Antwerp, Belgium, uh, convicted uh, three agents of the Iranian uh, intelligence ministry for attempting uh, to bomb the Iranian resistance's annual gathering in Paris. Uh, they acted under the command of a diplomat terrorist who had already been sentenced uh, to 20 years in prison. Uh, this act of state terrorism, before anything shows, the regime's fear of the Iranian resistance and its democratic alternative. After the court of Antwerp ruling, we urged the EU to cut diplomatic ties with Tehran. Uh, 40 years uh, uh, of experience shows that this regime does not understand any language but the language of firmness and force. Uh, resistance units have expanded all across the country. Over the last uh, Persian year, uh, they carried out more than 2,230 uh, anti-repression campaign to pave the way for uprisings. January, the resistance units have carried out several major campaigns, uh, disrupting the operation of the state-run national radio and uh, television networks, uh, its Ministry of Propaganda, and the ministry that plunders Iranian farmers. Also, since uh, Thursday, the Iranian resistance uh, has been going public uh, with the valuable data it has obtained from the regime's prisons organization. Uh, the Iranian resistance has exposed the regime's secret nuclear and missile sites since 20 years ago and alerted the world. Otherwise, uh, the Mullahs had already obtained uh, the atomic bomb. Today, we warn again that one should not delay. We say that we can and we must liberate Iran, the Middle East, and the world of the evil nuclear mullahs. by imposing comprehensive sanctions and international isolation of the religious dictatorship. The Mullah's regime should be placed uh, under Article 41 of Chapter 7 of the uh, UN Charter. Second, by referring uh, the dossier of human rights abuses in Iran and the clerical regime's terrorism, uh, to the UN Security Council, particularly the massacre of 30,000 political prisoners in 1988 and the killing of 1,500 during November 2019 uprising. Third, uh, by uh, recognizing the Iranian rebellious use 
struggle against the IRGC and the people's struggle to overthrow the Mullahs. And finally, as you said, uh, in the end, the Iranian people will have a secular, democratic, non-nuclear republic. <laughs> the women and men uh, sitting here uh, have devoted their lives uh, to the last press to this cause. They and their friends in the resistance units will soon welcome Mr. and Mrs. Pompeo in Tehran. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.